Uh, hi there, I'm Don MacArthur. We're at the Winter Star News Cafe uh, with Terry Jean Bedford. She's Canada's most famous dominatrix and constitutional crusader. Uh, she just won a, a historic uh, battle in Canada's uh, Supreme Court uh, where she championed uh, the rights of uh, sex trade uh, workers. Um, but really, you launched your constitutional challenge uh, in 2007, but it really began long before that, even on Peary Avenue in Windsor when you sort of uh, got busted uh, for running a, a brothel. How did it feel? Um, to get that validation when nine Supreme Court judges unanimously said, hey, you were right in confronting this unjust law. Oh, it was a, a great day, not just for myself, but for all women, all uh, persons uh, that live in Canada, men and women, because now the government must be clear and fair in writing new laws that don't harm anyone or put in, uh, or kill them or maim them. Okay, and this is really what uh, Beverly McLaughlin was uh, sort of said uh, in, in her judgment she wrote for the majority, um, in that the law was grossly disproportionate, yes. it caused way more harm than good, and actually it put sex trade workers in really, really vulnerable positions. Yes, it does, yes, especially the, the street workers. But from my own experiences, I was thrown out of my home in Thornhill and never told why. And uh, it was okay to do that, apparently. I went to the Supreme Court of Canada twice, and, and, and uh, uh, one session lasted only six minutes before they threw it out. So, as you can imagine, this was a great day for me, a historical day, as I said, for all of Canada. But for me, it was, it was vindication that I was right. Okay, I know you're talking about Thornhill, you're talking about the bondage bungalow correct. Uh, in Thornhill, uh, which is set up uh, sort of in 1993, and this was sort of a, an S&M place, uh, sadomasochism, uh, for role playing. Um, you contended sort of that uh, th there was no sex going on there, it was just people were paying uh, for sort of, we have cleaners uh, coming in and out, come to the news cafe, uh, cleanest cafe uh, in town. Um, uh, an S&M shop, and uh, you got busted, you were outraged, and you said this was when you had enough, you weren't going to take it anymore, and that's when you, you sort of vowed to fight these laws. Well, I had a lot of help. There were people and supporters around me that made it clear to me what I didn't understand, because um, they're well educated, and they were lawyers, and and uh, activists, so I followed a, a, a lot of times their lead and they strengthened me and enforced and, and fortified my conviction. Yes. Okay, and this takes a sort of, so one battle is won, but the war is not won, right? Because right now, uh, par, uh, the Supreme Court has given Parliament one year uh, to sort of to come up with new constitutional laws uh, governing the sex trade, and we know that Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, sort of in his cabinet are, are on, you know, sort of more the, the moralistic side of the prostitution debate, that probably on, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum than you. But you've written a, a letter to Stephen Harper. You have mm -hmm. some questions for Stephen Harper, and it raises the same questions that were raised back in 1993 and 94 in Thornhill. What constitutes a sex act? Correct. Yes, what does constitute a sex act? There's many uh, Im uh, very important questions that need to be addressed. First of all, what constitutes a sex act? Um, what is sex? And uh, what can I do with another consenting adult in the privacy of my own home without being arrested? Does the government have any place in our homes? And they have to outline in detail, um, if I tickle and spank someone for money, am I, uh, am I a criminal? Um, is conventional sex where I take my clothes off and a man um, inserts his penis into me and if he doesn't have an orgasm, is that sex? If he has an orgasm, is it sex? I mean, we have to outline and be specific about every little thing. There are over 750 variations of paraphilia. There's very, various kinds of fetishes that have to be addressed. Role play has to be addressed. The judges were not clear when they convicted me uh, about what it was that I did wrong. And we had to call experts in from across the country to discuss cross-dressing and role play. And uh, they couldn't even, um, even after their testimonies, give the judge an understanding of what sex was. So if the judge, in my case, didn't understand, Stephen Harper's going to have a hard time understanding uh, what to make of it as well. So it's going to be interesting. I think I've got them backed into a corner. And, it's, and the next election is going to be 
uh, quite sexy. <laughs> well, guaranteed it's going, be, it's going to be a heck of a debate in Parliament, uh, yes. that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to order copies of Hansard uh, in advance. Um, let's talk a bit about, uh, I guess, what you would like to see happen. Uh, Craig Pearson had a front page story the other day where you were speaking at the University uh, of, of Windsor. Uh, you were actually calling for the unionization uh, of sex exactly. trade workers in the bit to protect them. This is a big union town, Unifor, uh, I hope you're listening. Um, talk about that, unionization. How can we protect sex workers? What would you like to see happen? Okay, well, first of all, the unionization would only uh, uh, include women who are working in these um, new uh, brothels apparently that the strip clubs would like to open and I believe that um, they need to protect themselves with further bylaws and a union is probably the best way to go because you don't want to be fired for refusing a client and you don't want to be fired if you're on your menstrual cycle and you are forced to come into work. So there's a lot of things that we have to take into consideration. Yes, um, it's great to have our freedoms, but freedom comes with a lot of responsibility. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit. Coming through uh, that original decision by uh, Justice uh, Louise Himmel, uh, I yes. think that, that sort of when she came down initially. Susan Himmel. Oh, sorry, Susan Himmel. I, I apologize. Um, but, but coming through there it was it was the thing that you know there's a stereotype out there of the sex trade worker as victim, as prostitute, yes. uh, as victim. Um, you know, and historically, Jack the Ripper, Robert Picton, the Green River Killer. I mean, street walkers are targeted everywhere. The Highway of Tears. So. Talk a bit about that because in the decision it actually says that, you know, that stereotype is not true so much, that, no, that a lot of them are actually empowered. Oh, very much so. It's the law, the laws that allow the public to stigmatize, uh, degrade, um, all the things that we try to put a stop to um, with racism, the discrimination, um, the stigmatization, I mean, um, the mindset with the Negroes is being used on the prostitutes back in the civil rights movement, not in my neighborhood. Um, it goes on and on. Um, you can't uh, use your money in a, in a store to buy purchase goods because the store owner has been told that your money is dirty. So the laws and uh, the government perpetuate um, how the public is supposed to feel towards these women. Suffice it to say, I mean, if, if, if we clean this up, if we regulate it, uh, if there, there can be security, there can be cameras, Prostitution can be safe in this country. It's safe in Nevada. It's safe uh, in Australia. It's safe in Ger the Germany, in the Netherlands. Canada could have laws that make prostitution safe for women. Well, we don't need any new laws. We need the laws um, th uh, that are there to protect women and children enforced. The government doesn't speak about the shortage of women's shelters, uh, spousal abuse, men that can but don't pay okay. child support. They don't care about Aboriginal women. This government is feckless towards women. And um, the best thing for them to do is to sa stand aside and leave these laws alone because they're only going to make matters worse if they start tinkering with the decision of these 15 judges. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say that you're obviously you're very empowered now, um, but there was a time in your life when you weren't, yes. right? Uh, you had a, a troubled youth in Collingwood, and then as a ward of the CAS, you came to Windsor, yes. uh, where right away uh, in your teens you got hooked up with a pretty rough guy, a 37-year-old drug dealer. You guys were addicted to drugs. You turned to tricks uh, to sort of you know, pay for the drugs. So in some respects there, you were the prostitute yes. as a victim. I've and been every woman in this business. Okay. Yes. And, but I mean, the story, uh, you know, your, your affidavit uh, to the court, I mean, beaten, raped, horrible, mm -hmm. horrible experiences. Yes because of the laws. Had I been able to go to a brothel or um, there were services in town, there weren't any at this time like Maggie's or Stella's or any of the other organizations that have helped me in Toronto. Because the, I guess the, the, you know better than most hard how hard time. the street can be. However, yeah, I do. However, um, yes, it began as survival sex and then over time um, 
I, I tried to go back to school. I tried to do everything that I could, but um, adver one adversity after another forced me back onto the street. Okay. And so I had to try to make money to get first and last month's rent, which never happened because I was always trying to feed myself or uh, support a drug habit. Okay. So it just perpetuated, but then when I became a dominatrix, that all changed. There was a turnaround in my life. But let me tell you, there are women out there that I have met that are the total opposite of what I experienced. Um, they were out there trying to pay for their university educations. They were out there trying to buy a new mink coat. They were out there trying to get enough money to get a car. And now they're out there trying to pay their mortgages. So don't be fooled. Um, yes, there are people that are poor and this is their only source of ever getting a leg up. Okay. In life, um, and and we have to face those facts. That's the truth. But you also have to face the fact that there are women out there that like sex, that like getting paid for it, that do want to be law-abiding citizens. There are women out there that don't have sex but like fetish, that get paid more than a prostitute to do so, and want to contribute to society, be contributing members to society. But they don't want their tax dollars to land up in some senator's lap who disapproves of their work. We want that money earmarked, those tax dollars earmarked to go to women's shelters, to go to homeless shelters, to help the needy, to help vulnerable women who d don't like being part of the sex trade. That's where the money needs to go. That's where the tax dollars need to go. Now if you tell the sex trade workers that that's where their tax dollars are going, you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to facilitate the Revenue Canada with their money. Yes, they will. You know, it, did it work? Were these women safer inside uh, sort of uh, this brothel with, with sort of the, the security that you put in place? I believe so. Yeah. No, there, no one ever complained. There was one woman, I guess, um, the reason that I was um, convicted was she said that I forced her to work. I really don't know the story behind that, but I do know that there was an incident where um, uh, the bikers wanted to run me out of business. Okay. All right, and they came to me and they said, let's go for a drive. So we went for a drive. Okay. I got big square balls. We went for a drive and they asked me to sign it over. I said, I'm not going to. That's, they said, okay, well, we yeah. can take care of that. And then I was busted. The, one of their girls were working okay. for me. So, yeah. Kind of sounds like a Sons of Anarchy episode. Yeah. Uh, Kara Kara and Jackson, the gang. Yes. Anyway, anyway, cool. So Windsor, I mean, obviously some bad memories of Windsor, uh, but positive memories of Windsor too. You called it your uh, old hometown uh, the other well, day. Well, there's bittersweet memories here. Okay. Um, Yes, I've, I have uh, I have very fond memories of some of my old friends and um, some very disturbing memories of some of my enemies. Um, so yeah, it's bittersweet. <laughs> okay. Um, now you can read all about a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, she has two books here. Um, we have uh, Dominatrix on Trial, uh, that's Bedford uh, versus Canada, sort of crime clean the court cases. Uh, and there's definitely going to be, um, you know, this doesn't have the, the historic Supreme Court victory in it yet, so stay tuned uh, for more. And this one, uh, actually, uh, the Bondage Bungalow Fantasies, uh, is sort of letters that people had written you and, and right. scripts that uh, occurred in, uh, in the Bondage Bungalow. That's right. So this would be Stephen Harper. Yeah, uh, you know, Maybe you can uh, get on Amazon.com. Amazon yeah. So how can people get these books? Well, they're both very hard to put down, especially this one. Okay. Um, they're both very candid, and you can uh, get them online. You can go to www.terryjeanbedford.com, or you can get them through Barnes & Noble, uh, Kohl's, Indigo Bookstore, Amazon. Okay. Uh, it d definitely check them out. Um, you know, you, know, you were saying earlier, uh, you know, there, there's, there might be another, there's probably going to be a, another one coming out. Yes. And, but you're concerned now a bit with, with your legacy. Um, you're a little sick now. What, can you talk about that? Well, I have uh, a few problems. I've, uh, in the last 10 years, I've been on chemotherapy three times, and I'm about to start my fourth treatment soon, I hope. 
and we'll hope and pray it's successful, but I also have other um, very sensitive issues relating to my heart and um, that is incurable. So yeah, we're just living on borrowed time. Okay. Well, um, you've already made a big difference, you Thank know, you. and uh, pick up these books. Um, is there anything else you, you, you'd sort of like to add? As a lot of supporters uh, in Windsor, across the country, historic victory, anything, anything you'd like to say uh, to them? Or to Stephen Harper, for that matter? To Stephen Harper? Well, Stephen, your code word is I quit. Your safe word is I quit. Remember this? Okay. Okay. That's all I've got to say to Stephen and to the women of Canada. Stay vigilant. Okay. To, to all the um, citizens of Canada, these laws involve you too. This is not just about sex trade workers. The government is going to try to tell you, they're going to come in through the back door, they're going to try to tell you what you can and cannot do in the privacy of your home with another consenting adult. Don't let it happen. Do your part, whatever it is. Give $10, give $5 to the organizations that uh, continue to fight for our freedoms and our rights. Okay, I'm going to close out here uh, with two quotes. Uh, one from uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, uh, the state has no place in the bedrooms of the nation. Uh, and this one uh, online I just found uh, from Thomas Jefferson. If a law is unjust, a man is not only right to disobey it, he is obligated to do so. Uh, he should have said, uh, woman, because yes. uh, you waged a long fight and ultimately uh, you were uh, victorious. Uh, Terry Jean, uh, she's uh, Madame uh, Desaad yes. uh, on Twitter. Thank you very much for coming uh, to the Windsor Star News Cafe. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>